All right, take three, my friends. Good morning, this is Dr. Manette Riordan, and I am having some technical challenges this morning, but we are live now, have the microphone back working, and welcome. And um, if you're brand new here and stop by when my sound wasn't working, let's try this again. Hi, I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs, live with Manette. And I am super excited to be here this morning. If you're brand new to painting in your PJs, welcome. Uh, this whole series started because of my own personal creative practice of coming down to the studio. Yay, thanks, honey. My um, tech genie came down and fixed all the microphones for me. So hopefully other people will refind the right live video as well tech stuff, um, always an adventure. But I was really for about the last five years coming down to my studio and in my pajamas with my coffee and starting my creative day with writing, with drawing, with painting. It's uh, when I do a lot of my painting. Good morning, Yvonne. Yay, you found me. Had a, had a slow technical start this morning. Glad you're here. And uh, hopefully it is beautiful and sunny where you are. It's certainly warmer finally this morning and beautifully sunny here. And I woke up to the full moon shining outside my window. But the intention behind painting in your PJs is to share how I use art as a creative process for personal growth and uh, for looking at different ways and opportunities to really connect with ourself at a deeper level. Yay, Bonnie, I'm so glad you're alive. I have so missed seeing you, my friend. Uh, hopefully you are feeling better. Glad you are here. And what I have discovered over the last decade or so of just reconnecting to my own creativity, really feeling like I've been in a creative renaissance, is the benefit of using art and writing as such powerful tools for introspection. And especially the art, because it gets me out of my overthinking, very full head and back into my creative body. Yay, Jackie, you made it back over here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great to see everybody. So this morning's going to maybe be a little more luxury, um, information-y than arty, but it's what's on my mind. And my tendency on these shows is to share what's on my mind. And what's on my mind is recommitting to the 100 day project. And I realized that I got distracted by the painting of the portraits. I got distracted by my own painting practice, which I love coming down in the morning and diving into my painting practice. Uh, Cindy, it was actually my microphone wasn't working so I stopped and started a couple of times so my apologies for getting a little slow start and I had this aha last weekend that uh, how easily I get pulled away from the path that I'm on when I say that I want something and I say that something is important you know it's easy to get pulled away and it can be really easy to get pulled away from the path that's the most important path. As creatives, we often have a tendency to want to go down all the paths, often at the same time, and we end up feeling kind of fragmented, which is one of the things I love about the 100-day project, is it gives us this opportunity to practice committing to ourselves. And the thing about committing to ourselves is it breeds integrity, it be breeds self-trust. And yet when we fall off the path, when we go in one direction for a few days and then all of a sudden we're going in another direction, it creates a whole story in our heads. So I was thinking about what would it take for me to recommit to the 100 day project this morning? And I realized that these questions are questions I would ask anyone about recommitting to the journey that they're on, <laughs> the queen of just 
distraction. And I don't even have to leave my studio to get distracted because they're, you know, I've got all my worky work over there in one corner. I've got my studio over here with all the things, right? You know, it's like, it's easy to distract myself, but sometimes it's easy to distract myself when what I've committed to is hard. It's challenging, or maybe it is boring, right? Um, so I want to share with you a couple of different things today and remind myself, like I spent an, uh, about an hour before I got on the call with you guys this morning, thinking about my own creative project. Yay. Welcome back, Carol. My apologies for the technical challenges this morning. But I went through all of my notes. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera here. And um, so we have been recording other kinds of videos. And so now all my lights and everything, let's get those a little white, a little less yellow. So what looks good on the paper and what looks good on my face are definitely not the same things. But I realized I had to go back really kind of to the beginning of where I started. So all of my notes and my doodles for my 100 day project. And I started off strong, making a lot of progress. And then we're working on this quiz that's gonna end up being, and some of you have seen the samples and the drawings, it's gonna end up being called your creative superpower. What's your creative superpower quiz? And it's almost ready to launch. I'm so freaking excited. And that has taken a lot of time and attention and it's part of the book but I felt like it also pulled me away from kind of making sort of consistent progress on my work. So I had to spend some time going back to my project this morning and looking at what's exciting about this. Where am I on the journey? What is it that I want to be doing and creating, looking at where I've made progress and I wasn't giving myself credit for making progress, forgetting about pieces that I had done. And everything is still very much in draft form. And I realize that we always need um, an opportunity to recommit to our journey. So I sat down and made a list of questions that if I were coaching myself or coaching one of my clients, what would I ask them? Or if someone was reading the book and on their own heroine's journey, you know, what would I want to ask them to make sure that one, they're on the right path, and two, how can we recommit to that path? So I wanna make a pretty illustrated page here with these ideas about how do we recommit to the journey? And I think it's so important on our journey through life that we pause and make time to recommit. So one of the things that I'm having to work on quite a bit in this 100 day project of writing a book is getting comfortable with my own style of handwriting and illustration because this book is going to be largely hand drawn. It feels challenging and intimidating and exciting all at the same time. I'm still trying to figure out the balance of what's going to get you know, typed and what's going to get drawn. And I don't know that yet. I realized this morning some of the fun explorations that need to happen as I was working on the, the illustrations of my characters for the quiz is figuring out what the best markers are for the type of illustration that I want to do, or do I need to turn to watercolor for the illustration? So there's a lot of experimentation that needs to happen, and I get to decide that all of the play and experimentation and practice is also part of the 100-day project for me. So my 100-day project is I'm writing a book, um, my fourth book, and right now the working title of the book is called Befriending the Dragon, A Heroine's Journey for the Second Half of Life. If you know me at all, you know I'm a wee bit obsessed with dragons. I love all things to do with dragons, but I also loved how in traditional treasure maps, 
they would write, here be dragons on the edges of maps for unexplained or unexplored territory. And uh, I was reading this great book and I loved how she described that women don't slay the dragons, they befriend the dragons. And it's how I feel about things like our inner critic, right? Is that we befriend the dragon. So how do we recommit to the journey? So I wanna create a pretty page in my own handwriting about recommitting to the journey. So, you know, um, what I'm learning about drawing banners is that write your words first, draw the banner second. So um, this is gonna be called how, and I can't write letters and talk at the same time, how to recommit so that's not all going to fit across the page. So I think we're going to do it this way. And as I'm creating this book, I'm noticing how much of it is about very much like my Creative Renaissance program where I'm asking questions more than providing lots of information. So when we get stuck on a project, an idea, a path that we've set ourselves on, how do we recommit to that journey? So that's the question I wanna to explore today. So I heard a couple of people yesterday talking about getting overwhelmed or feeling like they were behind. And certainly I don't feel overwhelmed, but I feel definitely a little bit behind and definitely a little bit like I have not, uh, made the time to work on my book because there have been other things to work on. A hundred percent, that is absolutely one of the, the steps, Carol. So the first question to ask yourself to get recommitted to any journey, any project, any life path that you're currently on is to simply ask yourself, why did you start in the first place? Or another way to ask that might be, what inspired you to begin? And what I love about this question is this is the place where we can either rekindle the fire or douse the fire. But the first thing to do is to really shed some light on why did you start? Uh, there we go. Get that a little. No, that's darker. Mm, sorry. Busting with my tech this morning. That's what we get for changing everything up. So this feels maybe like a flashlight because part of the journey here is to use sketch noting and to come up with illustrations that match the concepts and ideas. So we need to shine a light on why did we start or what inspired you to begin. Um, and to be really honest with yourself at every step of the journey. So when the 100 day project started, did you get excited because you had some FOMO, fear of missing out? Everyone else is doing it. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and follow the path for everyone. Did you start because you had a project you were really excited about? for a minute, but that excitement didn't carry through. So the first step to recommitting is to go back to the beginning and ask, why did you start? The second step to recommitting is asking yourself, do you still love the project or the path or the journey or the direction? So in terms of my book, it would be Do you still love or need or want to, how do I want to say that? Uh, do you still love, need, or want to continue 
the path that you're on. So one year I started a 100 day project of uh, collaged index cards. And it was a pretty simple project. And I tried to start it right when we were in the middle of selling our house in California and moving to Colorado. And we were making so many decisions every day. I remember the moment when I was living and working in my mom's basement for a couple of months while we were house hunting here in Colorado. And I remember thinking, why am I doing this? Did I just jump on the bandwagon? Um, did I think that I needed to do this to keep up with my other artist friends? Did I think that I needed the, the creative project to keep me focused? and happy in the midst of everything going on. And I realized that the project wasn't serving me at all, right? And I needed to let go of that project. I was already making art every single day. I didn't need to also make that art. So I think that was a big one for me was learning how to choose a project that felt better aligned with the direction that I wanted to go. Um, and so do you still love, need, want to continue the path? I got to maybe work on the wording there a little bit. And then we get to kind of choose over here. If your answer is no, you don't love it, then you get to let it go. and let it go, like Carol said, without any judgment or criticism, right? So with zero self-judgment, or in Carol's words, no beating yourself up here. Like you just get to decide. And I think that what happens is we stay in this story over here of blame and judgment because we don't want to feel like we're letting ourselves or other people down. We don't want to be embarrassed because we said we were going to do the 100 day project and then we changed our mind. And the truth is it's more in alignment, integrity, and an act of self-love to let a project go with grace than to just not do the project and to spend all your time beating yourself up. So I think it's really important to let it go with zero self-judgment and with um, to let it go with grace. And if it's a yes, you still love it. I could draw pages of arrows. I don't know what it is about drawing arrows. Always feels like one of those fun practices. And so if this is a yes, you know you're on the right path. You know it's the right project. You want to continue doing what you've always done. Then you need to pause here. and be honest with yourself. Why did you stop? So in my case, I got pulled away by work projects that were more urgent. Um, and I was at my computer working at 6 a.m. instead of being in my creative zone and my creative space, right? So ask yourself, why did you stop? What stories, excuses, or real life incidents pulled you away from your path? For example, getting sick. 
can pull you off the path. Having to care with loved ones can pull you off the path, right? So we get to choose where we want to go next, right? Either way, whether you say no and let it go with grace or you say yes and you recommit, there are real benefits to restarting our journey. So the benefit of recommitting So when you recommit, and this page definitely needs some work, right? Um, I'm thinking this, maybe we need some happy little hearts or something over here. We need to line up the text a little bit. But when you recommit, you build self-trust. and you feel in integrity with yourself. And when you feel in integrity and you build self-trust, what happens is that then you let go of the stories, the blame, the beating yourself up, the judgment, and you start again. So you start again, whether it's a new journey or you continue on the same journey. But then over here, right, you're ready to begin again. So maybe we've got our little hiker here. And she's ready to get she's got her travel hat on and she's ready to begin again. So for me, this is a look at my 100 day project, a page by page. What do people know in order to go on their own hero's journey? Is this helpful to have these questions to think about? So um, I promise this one was going to be a little more luxury, a little less artful this morning. But this is what's on my mind today. Day is how do I recommit to the journey? So again, just to quickly summarize, what inspired you to begin? Do you still love it? Do you still need to do it or want to do it? And are you on the right path? And if it's a no, you get to let it go with grace. If it's a yes, you get to be honest with yourself about why did you stop? And life gets in the way. When life gets in the way, that's not an excuse or a story, right? It's not an excuse or a story. So sometimes we simply get bored. And if you're bored, you either need to understand why you are excited about it or let it go. So what happens is that we get stuck in Right? We get stuck in this minefield of stories we're telling ourselves. And that minefield of stories, it's really easy to lose years in this minefield thinking about all the reasons that we can't, we don't want to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then as I was thinking about this, I remembered um, another map that I drew as part of my recent Nancy Drew class that I feel like needs to one, get simplified quite a bit and two, needs to go in the book. But I feel like this is a nice draft and inside my creative renaissance program that's my year-long group coaching program that really is about helping women answer the question uh who am i and what's my purpose right those in my coaching work and my programs those are the two questions i hear over and over and over again and in my creative renaissance program there's places where we pause and we stop and we and, and these questions were missing. So I invite people to review, but I don't know that I ask these questions. So writing the book is going to help me make that project better, but it's also going to help make the Creative Renaissance program so clear. Um, yeah, exactly, Bonnie, right? Um, so you have kept going even though you've been sick, which is like huge and amazing. 
And um, I'm hoping that you're on the men because being sick, it takes us out, right? That's a real life, life happening. It's not an excuse. It's not a story. You're not stuck over here telling yourselves all the reason that why you can't do it, right? You're being honest. And I would say that be honest needs to go on both sides over here or maybe at the top, so be honest. Is it a clear no, is it a clear yes, or are you stuck in the minefield, minefield of stories? And the only way to get out of this minefield of stories is to choose your direction, right? Choose your direction. So this got me thinking about why The Clarissa complex. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The Clarissa complex. And Clarissa is one of my uh, creative characters from our creative superpower quiz. And Clarissa is the curious dabbler. And uh, she is interested in and often distracted by all of the bright, shiny ideas. I have to get Brad to come down here. He fixed the microphone, but we got to work on the, the lights a little bit. So I started thinking about this whole thing is intended to be a journey. And part of the, the journey is understanding how do we get to where we want to go, right? How do we get to where we want to go? And there are two things that we need. Actually, there's four things that we need on the journey and the four things that we need are clarity first and a map can help with clarity we need so clarity i would also call this we need you know clear direction is one of the first step of the journey is you need to know your first step but you need courage and you need self trust you need courage and you know, need self-trust. And sometimes we need a map. So what I'm creating is the map. But I can't give you courage and self-trust. You have to identify those yourself. So I want to recreate this because this is going to be really an, an important part of the book. I'm going to see if I can set this up over here and have some fun uh, working on illustrating this map. I love that you're going through this with um, other things that we're doing. Yep, so true. And Bonnie, I've been watching your work in Creative Renaissance with the, the six keys, right? And seeing how those six keys relate to all of this and really stir us up, which is what I'm going to work on tomorrow is illustrating pages of my six keys. Holy moly. That is a lot of YouTube channels, Cindy, you overwhelmed yourself. So you, um, yeah, so you wrote down, weeded it down to 10. I have done that with Facebook groups and Facebook pages. I don't spend a ton of time watching YouTube videos, but I have other places. Hi, Georgia. Um, you want to come up and say hi? I'm coming up. What? Come on. She's sitting here with her little paws on the side of my leg and she's going to come in. Yes, it is easy to click subscribe for sure, for sure. <laughs> Bonnie's nodding. I love that. Awesome. Okay, so I want to have this be really focused on how we get to where we want to go. And so I want to kind of reimagine this initial illustration that I did, I want to maybe simplify the process and it might actually become, I'm upside down in my journal. Why am I upside down in my journal? Let's try this again. Kind of reimagine this idea of courage and self-trust, why they matter and how are they helpful on our creative journey. And I also just want to say thank you. I appreciate those of you who stick around and listen to my creative rambles. I'm going to be really focused on creating and illustrating this book uh, between now and the end of the 100 day project here on the channel.
So the place we have to start is we have to choose a direction. And sometimes choosing, <coughs> excuse me, is the hardest thing to do. <coughs> like just figuring out where we are in the moment. Yes, self-doubt, I would say, is the opposite of self-trust, right? It's the opposite of self-trust. So how do we get to where we want to go? So where we want to go... I imagine it like getting to the top of a mountain range. And I want to be standing right here on the top of this mountain range, sort of, you know, maybe putting my flag at the top of the mountain here that says I am here. And we often have an idea of where we're going. We have a direction that we're going. I know I am going on this creative journey and maybe the top is the journey but maybe actually over here, I've gone up and over and around and around, and I've ended up over here. Oh, that's really uh, interesting. Jackie says she got stuck on the 100-day project because she wasn't doing it the way you thought you would do it in the beginning. And uh, is there opportunity to go back to the beginning and restart, or are you okay with the way it's going, or is it time to let it go, right? So those are some of those questions you get to ask again without any judgment. And as I'm illustrating this book, I want to always kind of put my own caricature of myself in here. And I'm over here holding on to this flag and I'm celebrating. It's hard drawing small, but I'm trying to practice drawing the pages the same size size they're going to be um, in the book, right? So that I have a sense of the actual layout um, of the book and I'm finding some constraints with some of this with the side, right? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to choose a direction, right, is the secret. Another way to say that is one of the things that we need is clarity, right? And so this is all about how do we get where we want to go? Actually, that should be up at the very top up here. I'm going through a lot of pencil lead and a lot of erasers right now. So this is about how do we get in that box isn't going to be big enough because I changed my mind here. So how do we get to where We say we want to go, right? We say we want to go. Because sometimes we say, as we're all seeing with the 100-day project, but what happens on the path, right, Jackie, is the project change. The direction changes. Uh, we got to take some detours. Or in some cases, we decide we were on the completely wrong path. And so we need to find a new path. And the way we're going to find a new path, right, is by letting go of the old path. 
we can't go down two paths at the same time. We have to choose. And I have a whole page in the book about um, my favorite ways to make a dis decision. Be happy and curious, right? Curiosity is such a great tool for the journey. Yeah, turning out much more interesting and now you're keen to keep going. I love that, Jackie, reconnecting to curiosity and what else is possible. Um, yes, Carol, figuring out how to organize it. I have kind of felt that way uh, with the, the book project. And uh, my husband has decided to have some fun and try his hand at writing a science fiction book. So yesterday we were talking about the software to help keep him organized. And then I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could also use that software to keep me organized. So how do we get to where we want to go? So first is we need a direction. Let's see. This is the challenging part is how do I get what's in my head onto the page, right? So um, first, we need to choose a direction. And second, we need a map. Right, so step one is choose a direction. Step two is create a map. And then step three, is gather your tools. And some of those tools are going to be practical. So a journal, a pen, right? Your art supplies, maybe a water bottle. Like what do we need, right? Or what are our practical tools? And this can get a fun illustration added to it. But some of those tools are going to be the inner tools. So if these are real life tools, right? These are our um, inner strength is a tool. But we need to build that inner strength. We need to build inner strength. I love that, right? And to me, there's nothing wrong with taking the scenic route, right? So if you choose a direction, right, uh, is it going to be direct? It's almost never direct right? Or are you going to take the scenic? I much prefer the scenic path. There's more to see, right? There is, um, and a map is like, it's a guide. It's not set in stone. Carol, you always have great ideas that help me think through my ideas, right? So, I always want to take the scenic path. So I'm not someone who's going to start here and go straight to the top, right? That's a much harder route, right? Actually, I want to, you know, start over here and take the gentler, windier path to the top. But I get to choose, right? I get to choose. So we need to gather our tools. And this is what I call your inner strength toolkit. And this would be curiosity, top of the list. And this would be courage. This would be self-trust. And I would say it would also be self-compassion. So any time that we set out on a personal journey, journey of self-discovery, this is where we begin the process. First, we decide where we're going 
and then we ask how do we how are we going to get there we need a map right we need a visual of the the destination we need kind of a sense of i am here right and this is this part right here this is that clarity I know who I am, I own who I am, I love who I am. So the top of the mountain is where we finally get that clarity of identity, that clarity of purpose. And our tools for the journey are practical. We need a practical toolkit, a backpack that's gonna carry all our practical tools, but we also need an inner strength toolkit. And curiosity, courage, self-trust, and self-compassion are gonna get us there. So let's talk for our last step today about, so now that I, so this is changing as I go, right? So now I'm saying, okay, here's this inner strength toolkit, but what is that inner strength toolkit? What does it look like? What do we need to know about it? How do we grow in those areas? So I want to maybe start with courage because I've already done some work around courage. And we need to first define what is courage. So I would love to hear from you, what is your definition of courage? So I think for each of these elements of the toolkit, they can each be little mind maps. You guys know how much I love mind maps. So if I'm gonna do this as a mind map, I'm going to want to go this way, have courage right smack in the center of the page. And courage often kind of maybe feels like fire or flames to me. So maybe we'll have some kind of, right, lighting the fires of my courage, something interesting there. Oh, that's hilarious, Carol. Um, I like to intentionally take the scenic route, go a different direction. My husband often wants to go the most direct path, right? So we have different approaches to how we like to travel. So first we need to define what is courage. I want to share what are some common myths that people believe about courage. And then I want to share some ways we can increase our courage as we travel on the journey. And even when we're talking about something as simple as recommitting to the 100 day project, it takes courage. It takes courage to recommit and get back on the path again, it also takes courage to let it go and know when a project is complete and done. A leap of faith into something you're not sure about. That is a beautiful, beautiful definition. So a pretty common definition of courage is do something even if it's scary. Another formal definition of courage is acting on our beliefs and convictions. Even when they may not be popular, even when they may not be the status quo, even when they may make us stand out and be different. Courage is often also defined as strength in the face of pain or grief. We just keep going. Like I watch how many prof professional athletes keep going, keep playing, keep pushing through 
pain, right? Like um, my husband loves listening to stories about like ultra marathoners that run 100, 150 miles straight through without sleeping. Not something I'd be interesting to do, but the, the tenacity and the courage it takes to do that and how people move through that even when their body hurts. Or how do we keep going in the face of grief or loss or illness, right, is another one. Um, and I want to add on here what Jackie said. So all of your great wisdom is going to end up in my book here, uh, A Leap of Faith. Into the Unknown right? Taking, being willing to taking a risk. So a great example of this is we're deciding to choose a direction. Well, we don't know where that direction is going to take us. It could be a direct path. It could be a scenic path. It could be a 20 year journey, right? Our, our life tends to move in ways that are often unexpected. And because it's so unexpected, we could get stuck right here in more of that story mind field, unable to choose, right? Unable to choose. So choosing a direction may sound easy, but this is another possibility to get stuck over here in that mind field of stories. I really am so grateful to be sharing this and have even one person listening live because I am such a verbal processor. So um, you guys that are my regulars, um, once the book is done, I would love to gift some copies of the book to those of you here that show up with me live every day because I am so incredibly grateful for you guys continuing to listen to all of my uh, crazy thoughts and ideas. So those are some of the classic definitions of courage. Some of the myths of courage that I find really fascinating, one that it's reckless, so I definitely grew up with a mom that had a lot of fear about my brother and I getting hurt, right? And so there was always that um, caution and rightfully so. She was our mom and she loved us and she didn't want to get hurt. So we get told a lot that stepping out into the unknown um, is reckless, right? Taking big risks, financial risks, physical risks, emotional risks, we get told that it's reckless, right? And that we're going to get hurt. So that can put a damper on our courage, but courage is never reckless. We always learn when we're willing to take those risks. In fact, I need to um, add something on here about risks. Another myth of courage is that other people see our risk taking, acting on our beliefs and convictions as selfishness, right? As selfishness. Aw, Carol, yeah. Um, I'm very generous that way and very grateful, right, for the support that I receive here. So a lot of times we get told, so imagine that you decide that you um, are going to quit your job and take a year off and go on a sabbatical. Wouldn't that be dreamy? That would be really dreamy for me personally right now. And some people might see that as selfish, right, as too focused on me. And as women of a certain age who were taught to always be putting other people first, um, we were often told that focusing on ourselves, acting on our own beliefs and convictions, taking risks was not only reckless, but it was also selfish. So some of these could be very deep seated things that we heard when we were children that we heard from uh, parents, from teachers, from, you know, uh, different uh, religious beliefs, right? You know, that, and they're, they were taught to us as children to keep us safe, but they don't serve us as adults. It's our own job to keep ourselves safe. We get to decide what our comfort level is with risk and with acting on beliefs and conv con convictions and leaping into the unknown. Uh, the other myth of courage is that it's always a solo adventure. 
that we have to travel alone, that courage always has to be by ourself, right? And um, I think that uh, we have to remember that we don't have to travel alone. Sometimes it's very much a solo adventure to do the inner traveling required to become uh, our best self, our most creative self, our most authentic self. And yet we can have guides, we can have supporters, we can have fans along the way. Hey, Marion. Good morning. Good morning. Um, that's a great question, right? That someone else's belief that your actions are selfish come from their own jealousy and resentment. A hundred percent, it could be, right? It definitely could be. So a little bit about the definition, a little bit about the myths of courage. Um, I would say another myth of courage is that the only way to increase it is um, to take huge risks, to take big risks. But really, the way that we're going to grow our courage and increase in courage is baby steps. So the first thing we have to do to increase courage is to step outside our comfort zone. Nothing new happens in the comfort zone, right? When we're in our comfort zone, we stop learning, we stop growing. And the comfort zone becomes that minefield of stories that we tell ourselves about, I have to maintain the status quo. I have to stay where I am. So nothing new. Actually, what I want to say here is nothing grows. in the comfort zone. So bringing this back to our conversation about, I know, right, Yvonne? Oh, that comfort zone. It is a big, deep pit, and it is a very happy place to be, right? Um, again, bringing this back to our idea of how do we recommit to the 100-day project, we recommit by stepping outside the comfort zone and saying, this was harder than I thought it would be, but okay, I'm going to keep going. Or this isn't fun for me anymore. I'm letting it go. And I'm not a bad person because I didn't finish the 100-day project. So letting go of that blame and judgment. So step one to increasing courage, you got to step outside that comfort zone. The thing is that we can take little tiny baby steps outside the comfort zone. We don't have to completely jump off the cliff, right? We don't have to jump off the cliff. We get to just step and every small step, right, grows that comfort zone. So I would say small steps. And sometimes it's a shift in perspective, like Carol said earlier, we're not lost, we're just taking the scenic route, right? Sometimes stubbornness keeps us stuck in our comfort zone or lost because we're not willing to ask for help. So another way to increase courage, right, is to ask for support. reach out to community. And sometimes we got to be really careful who we ask for support. You want to make sure you're asking, you know, fans, cheerleaders, mentors. Oftentimes that is not a spouse, uh, not a parent. Um, sometimes it's not your best girlfriend because she's over here in the comfort zone with you and she's not ready to grow, right? So you got to be mindful of who you ask for support, but asking for support can help you move faster beyond the edges of that comfort zone. And then the other piece of how do we increase courage is you have to have a growth mindset. So there's a, a wonderful psychologist named Carol Dweck who sort of coined this idea of how there are two types of people, right? How there are two types of people, people with a growth mindset 
and people with a fixed mindset. And so people with a fixed mindset don't believe we can get out of our comfort zone. They don't believe that we can grow and change. They believe that whatever we're born with, that's the level of intelligence and understanding and everything else we have. They don't really see that change is possible. But people with a growth mindset, which is all of us, if you're here with me, you definitely have a growth mindset, since that's what this show is all about. About, you believe that you can grow and change. So you have to always reconnect to your um, faith in your own ability to grow and change, right? Faith in your own ability. Learning to accept the uncomfortable place as a sign that something is moving or changing. Yes, that something is moving or changing. Yes. Yeah, I think another um, that, you know, another great way to increase courage is self-acceptance, right? It's honoring and accepting your difference. It's honoring and accepting your difference. So we went through a lot of information. I have drafted three new pages for my book and my 100-day project, which is really exciting. So we started by looking at how do we recommit to the journey. We look at why do we start in the first place? Do we still love it? Are we stuck in the minefield of stories about why we can't say no or why we can't say yes? And recommitting to the journey is how we build trust, self-trust, and integrity. And self-trust is one of the inner strength tools that we need in order to get to where we're going. And so we kind of mapped out a little bit of how do we get to where we want to go. And this all still feels very drafty, but... Um, it's getting there. So the more that I draw and work on this, then the clearer that it gets. So courage is one of the things in our inner strength toolkit. And what I want you to think about, whether it's a 100-day project, writing a book, or any other creative project, is to give yourself permission for iterations right? Give yourself permission to do drafts, to not get it right the first time. I'm finding like for the illustrations for our creative superpower quiz, I've done five, six, seven different versions of each of those drawings and they're still not final. I think they need one more to get them really ready to go. Um, and Jackie, sweet dreams. I hope that you have some amazing dreams about courage. Um, oh, I so appreciate you, Bonnie, right? Yeah. You are so not alone, so not alone. And tomorrow we are going to come back and reconnect to our, to my, um, six keys of a creative renaissance. I started a draft for one page, but this was what I needed today in order to get myself recommitted to my 100-day project and reinvigorated for my uh book writing project, which the last couple of weeks I got a little distracted and I'm excited to be back on the path and I still love the project. So I need to get out of the minefield of stories about why I can't get it done and choose the next step in the direction. So the next step is gonna to be to work on these illustrations of the six keys. I so appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you for those of you that are um, catching the, the replay as well. And I'd love to hear more of your stories if you're watching the replay about um, how are you recommitting to your 100-day project if you got a little bit off path. Have a beautiful rest of your day, everybody. I will see you bright and early or late tomorrow, depending on what time zone you're in. And uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Bye, everybody.